Hey there, welcome. About one week ago, I started work on a Lua-inspired scripting language, and it already beats Python in multiple benchmarks, even though it's really not optimized yet. Today, I want to show you how that's possible. But first, a quick demo. Please excuse the syntax. I had more important things to do than writing a nice parser. But it's got the basics, print, add, control flow, functions, lists, tables, as you would expect from a Lua-like language. Combining these features, we can already implement the game of life. Now let's talk performance. This code snippet runs the game of life without printing the board between steps. As you can see, my language does about 14,000 steps per second. Now let's see how Python does. I've implemented the exact same algorithm in Python and made things a bit more Pythonic in the process. But still, Python only does about 9,000 steps per second, about 35% slower. While it's fun to beat Python in a real use case, we should look at a simpler example to understand what's going on here. Here is an iterative Fibonacci function. Computing fib of 10 million takes about 310 milliseconds in my language. Python takes close to 700 milliseconds, so only about half as fast. But if you know a bit about Python performance, you're probably screaming at me right now. Okay, fine. Here's a more Pythonic version. I even removed the temporary variable. But still, about 1.3 times slower than my language. To understand what's going on here, why my language beats Python in both cases, and why the for loop is so much faster than the while loop, you need to look at how Python works under the hood. You may have heard that the Python interpreter walks the source code line by line to execute it. And that's absolutely not how it works. That would be insanely inefficient. Instead, the source code is first compiled to so-called bytecode, and then, when the function is executed, the Python virtual machine walks this bytecode, line by line, to execute it. Here's a simple function that adds three numbers. Using Python's dis module, we can see its bytecode. On the left here, we can see the line numbers, and these words in the middle are the bytecode instructions. Python's VM is what's called a stack machine. That means there's a stack of values. Crazy, I know. In Python, the first couple of values on the stack are the parameters and local variables. These numbers here tell us that a is at stack index 0, b is at index 1, c at 2, and r at 3. First thing the function does is add a plus b. In a stack machine, this is done by first pushing the values of a and b to the top of the stack, done by these load fast instructions here. Then the binary add instruction pops these two values off the stack and pushes their sum back onto the stack. Now we just need to push c, then binary add, and there we go. The sum is at the top of the stack. Next, the result needs to be stored in the r variable. To return r, we again need to load fast, and then the return value instruction returns this value from the function. You may have noticed that the Python VM has to shuffle a lot of memory around. Push this, pop that. And indeed, this is quite wasteful. Of these eight instructions here, only three actually perform useful work. It's a bit like walking through mud. Each step forward takes just that little bit more effort, but over time it really adds up. So what if we just removed some of the mud from the code? The real issue here is that the binary add and return value instructions always operate on the values at the top of the stack. But we could make them operate on arbitrary values in the stack by encoding the source and destination stack indices in the instruction itself. That way, the VM can simply read the stack values from wherever they are, perform the operation, and store the result to wherever it is actually needed. This design, where instructions can operate on arbitrary stack values, is called a register machine. And this is exactly how things work in my language's virtual machine as well. Here's the bytecode of the iterative Fibonacci function. Python on the left, my language on the right. They basically do the exact same thing, except Python does a lot of stack shuffling in between. So this explains why the Python code using the while loop is two times slower. But how would using tuples and a for loop make this any better? Well, here's the bytecode of the Pythonic version. I won't explain it in detail, but suffice it to say the loop body does a lot less work. The i variable along with the comparison and the increment are now done by the Python VM. But still, there's more stack shuffling in the loop, which is why this version is still 1.3 times slower than mine. So, should Python switch to a register machine? Well, I'm not sure. Register machines are a little more complicated to implement, and number crunching isn't exactly Python's primary use case. But some preliminary testing suggests that my VM can get another two times faster, and the cycles and energy wasted by a language as popular as Python are not to be underestimated. Anyway, I'll see you after the holidays. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year!